Hello my hunka hunka burning loves. Welcome back to another video. So today what you see in front of you is an Arteza 12 by 12 canvas that I painted with black Grumbacher Mars black paint. I am going to do one more Dutch pour per a request from a viewer. She wanted me to do a Dutch pour using Galaxy Colors, so I figured I would use a black canvas with black base. So the colors I'm going to be using are all Arteza except for the black that I just showed you. Uh, the fluorescent pink that you will see in a minute, that is Liquitex, no, Artist Loft. And I'm going to use three primary elements. Now, the primary element colors I'm going to use are Stargazer, It's like a really pretty periwinkle color with when you turn it I don't know if you can see it it's like a color shift to a it's got a teal maybe in it now I'm not politically correct when it comes to color description so please excuse me I just explain what I see in my my own words then this one this beautiful color is called Snapdragon. And then I have some Irish Mist. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna add the Irish Mist, but I mixed it up for another project. I may add it, I may not. That is the Irish Mist. Now, these colors are all uh, shimmery colors. They are mixed with a product called Polypore. I emptied my bottle, so I don't have the bottle, but it's sold by Color Art. It's what you mix the primary elements with to get the perfect paint consistency. Now, when I say perfect paint consistency, I mean for pouring, but when it comes to a Dutch pour, you need your paints to be really, really fluid so that they will flow easier over the canvas. Um, when you're doing your, your basic flip cup or dirty pour, where you put all the colors into one cup and just flip it on the canvas and then tilt the canvas, they don't need to be that thin because you're tilting the canvas and they you're moving them around. When you do a Dutch pour, you do a little puddle pour and then you need to blow it out with your, your blow dryer. So, or your mouth. So, what you have to do to thin down those primary elements that are mixed with the polypore is you can add a little bit of water, but she also sells something called art fluid. Now, you can use this to thin down your colors and you can also use it, which you will see in a future video, to dye your stones for your geodes, which is really, really cool. So if you want to see how sh that's used to stain rocks, Leslie's channel is listed in the description. She is the creator of all of those beautiful resin art colors and the primary elements and these products. She has a channel and she has a video showing you how to use this to create your own uh, colored stones. So as I said, you need the paints very thin so that you can blow them with the blow dryer or your mouth. I don't use my mouth because I'm too busy yapping, but blow dryer works good in most cases. So I'm going to strap on some gloves because look at my hands. The tears of Christ can rain down upon these hands and they still would not be clean. So I have to start wearing these gloves because paint is a nightmare to get out. 
gets in your cuticles, it gets everywhere. And I'm tired of digging my skin off. So here we go. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cover your canvas in a base color. So tonight it's going to be black for me. Most of the times this is done in white. I know a couple people have done it in black. But for Galaxy, I figured black would be best. So now this paint is the only paint that is, besides the primary elements, that is mixed with Floetrol, just the base black. The rest of the colors are only paint and water, nothing else, no silicone, nothing. Just water and paint until you get a nice consistency. So I'm gonna just take this and tilt it around. You can use a spatula also, like a silicone spatula. A stick whatever works for you I'm more of a pour it on and tilt it around kind of girl and then I'll just do the cut the corners here okay and then what I like to do is just go along the edge like this, all four sides. Just make sure those are covered well also. This way I don't have to fuss with them after. gonna torch really quick and now for the colors so the first one is Arteza ultramarine blue Sorry, I forgot to take the <laughs> glove off of my paint. What I do is I use my old gloves to cover these, to cover my leftover paint. Okay, so here we go. That's the ultramarine blue. Make some room here. See, easy way to store your paints. This here is violet. don't need a lot because you're gonna each color you add is gonna make this wider and wider and you don't want a ton of paint on the canvas for this technique next I'm going to use that stargazer then I'm going to Make sure I separate that color 
that shimmery color with another matte color. You want to have both matte and shimmery colors when you do a painting because if you use all shimmer it's just going to take over and I don't think you're going to enjoy the outcome. That's just my personal opinion. It's cool though, like my canvas is tilting a little bit. So you can see it's kind of doing fractals there. So this is magenta. Then I'm going to hit it with the Snapdragon. And we need some more of that. The fluorescent pink. A little more uh, uh, violet. Go violet. And some copper. I'm going to leave out the Irish mist for now. A little bit of copper. And this is probably too much paint, but we'll see. Now, here's where the interesting part comes in. Usually, you surround your puddle with the same color that is on your canvas. What I'm going to do is surround it with white and black. I want to try something different. So first, I'll grab the white. And I'm going to do a nice little line around it. Of white. Oh, maybe a little bit more. All right, and now I'm gonna come with the black and really go around that good. All right, so now we get the blow dryer. We blow this portion over the colors and then blow the colors out into the black. I went too fast on that. Now out. some of that white to come out. Look at those cells, no silicone. No silicone and look at the cells. Now, what did I do by not using silicone? I saved myself a lot of trouble because I want to resin this. And getting silicone off of a canvas is a nightmare for me. An absolute nightmare. So being able to attain these cells without using it is very good to me. Very good for me, not to me. I was going to move this out a little bit more, but I like how these look like ghost ghost flames almost. I'm just going to leave it alone and see what develops here. Now the only thing is, is this area is kind of, uh, but do I really want to ruin all of this? I mean, I could put a little tiny bit of color here and blow it out, but I see some more cells popping through here. 
So you know what? I'm going to leave well enough alone, give you a close-up, and call it a day. So I'm really, really liking that. I do have here another one that I did that I can show you guys. I really like the way this one came out also. So you know, I would love, love, love to do something here, but I am just digging the rest of this so much that I don't want to touch it. Sometimes you just have to quit while you're ahead. So here's the close-up. <clears throat> you can see what I mean about those ghost flames, ghost leaves. Oh, we have another cell that just popped out here. Um... Right there, some of that stargazer coming through. And there you have it, my friends. I hope you guys are all having an amazing weekend. I want to do a shout out. FX Acrylics. She's new to YouTube and has some awesome videos out there. So go on and check her out. Tell her I said hi. And thank you for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Leave your comments and questions below. And as always, happy pouring. <laughs>